Following the lives of eight very different couples dealing with love in their own various ways, all set a month before Christmas in London, England, Love Actually is up next on Inside Movie. Uh, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, my name is George McHale. I'm a comic book maker, and today we're talking Love Actually. Um, follow along all month. We're uh, doing different Christmas movies. Uh, we just did Krampus last week, and up next we've got Jingle All the Way. And is it a is it a Christmas movie? Lethal Weapon. Yes, it is for our purposes. <laughs> so that'll be later in December as well. Uh, today I am joined by writer illustrator. GMB Kamichuk, novelist Andrew Buckley, and the editor in chief of Merck Publishing, Murphy. That's <laughs> form? What was that? That's, well, that's her, her sign. Like, you, you needed to, like, prepare and have, like, some. I know. I thought of it just in the last second. <laughs> uh, let's get into it. What's the good? What do we like about Love Action? Oh my god. I liked it when it was over. Oh my god, oh. do you really hate it this much? Oh, this, this is really, really concerning to me. This is so bad. <clears throat> there are amazing cast, marvelous performances, horrible messages, terrible, uh, terrible legacy in this film. But I'll, I'll keep it to the good. Uh, Liam Neeson looks very young in it. <laughs> I I love the relationship that Liam Neeson has um, with the with the kid who's got a crush and like, that kid, he is so cute and he's done so many great movies and films since then it was just it was it was uh, I always love seeing actors like like at when they were like real young child actors it's just always something that kind of looks like oh look at you look at what you've done yes the cast uh, love actually features a murder's row of your favorite English actors, Hugh Grant, Emma Thompson, Colin Firth, Rowan Atkinson, all infuse their characters with instant likability. I think it's one of the strongest assets of this movie. My favorite thing is the uh, is the Christmas song. The new Christmas song <laughs> and that man that just, the, the performer that just absolutely hates it. And just to see him going on this full tour to celebrate it and just not taking anything seriously, I think it's, it's uh, the glue that kind of like holds the movie together is like you move through it. I just thought that I, it's so fun. I'll actually give you that, Murphy. I did that. I was chuckling through that part. I actually know a guy who's like that. Not quite like that, but close enough like that. That that, yeah. that was funny. Um, the other thing that I like, what is her name? Uh, Laura Linney. Is that how you pronounce it? Her last name? Oh, she's uh, she's like my least favorite. <laughs> but if you think about this, as her backstory before the Ozarks, then you understand why she's capable of such murderous intent later on in her life. I'm surprised you don't have like some kind of massive schema behind you of how all this shit connects with other movies, being that it's got like a ridiculous amount of famous actors in it. Well, like, how, I how are you not connecting think all that um, the one guy turning into an octopus at the end would have been a good connection to his uh, uh, parts of the Caribbean role. I think that would have been good. <laughs> or like Andrew Lincoln decides that he's gonna give all this up and move to the U.S. and become a you know a sheriff or whatever the hell he is before the beginning of the Walking Dead. You're Death. getting it. You're getting it. Right? Yeah, there's lots of different ways to go. Uh, I'm trying. Sorry, did everybody else not like this movie? <laughs> Was it all? Alan Rickman's in it. That's a good thing. I'm I'm clinging for good things. Alan Rickman's in it, but I think that Alan Rickman is actually Hans Gruber, um, uh, <laughs> pretending so that he can get a British visa, and then somehow immigrate to the America to <laughs> rob <laughs> but, Bond see, bank. but really does uh, Murphy George do you guys not like this movie either? is it am I yeah, the so, one that loves this movie I didn't see this movie when it came out I watched it uh probably for the first time like maybe like five or six years ago and I liked it I liked it fine <laughs> Um, but then this watching, uh, this was actually our our Thanksgiving our Thanksgiving uh, movie that we watched, um, and uh, I had a friend of mine with me that had never seen it before, and she hated it, and she the, the, she started pointing out things, and I was like, oh wow, yeah, 
wow, that guy is kind of a piece of shit. Oh, wow, they do kind of suck. And so I still I still like the movie, but I understand where they're coming from. Like, let's just take a moment and unpack Hugh Grant's super problematic relationship stalking. I'm your boss, but I'm going to fawn over you. And so you're going to have to like it. And, oh, I guess it's okay because I'm handsome. Oh, save it for the bad. All right, no, okay. no, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what's, I gotta, good? I gotta you know what's good about this movie, George? You know what's good about this movie, George? There's so much bad in it. That's what it's about. <laughs> Uh, I like the ensemble style plot with multiple interconnected storylines. While it does have its flaws, and we'll get into that in the bad, the structure of the movie keeps it fast paced and always entertaining. My favorite romantic comedy of all time is He's Just Not That Into You. And, um, you know, I feel like I feel like th that movie was definitely kind of probably a brainchild of someone that really, really loved Love Actually, you know? Um, and yeah, they 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 held together the stories really well. And I think that the timing that they spent on each particular scene to then skip to another story was was done perfectly. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blown away the note that people don't like love actually. Um, <laughs> I, I don't like Christmas movies in general and I don't really like romantic comedies. And this is both, but I this is like one of my favorite, probably my favorite Christmas movies realistically. <laughs> It's so cute. I love all the little inter interconnected stories. I love the performances by everybody. I mean, Alan Rickman is a shit, but like his performance in this movie is excellent. And the whole Bill Nye thing, like he kind of steals the show as the old rocker remaking a song that it doesn't even actually work. But that whole, and maybe it's because I grew up in England, that whole Christmas number one is like a, such a major event in England. Everyone goes batshit crazy to figure out what the Christmas number one is going to be. And there's so much press around it and so much media around it that I totally resonated with that whole storyline. It's hilarious. And it's always the crappiest piece of shit that makes it through for the Christmas <laughs> number one. It's always the one that people do not want to be the number one that is the number one. And so it, it was kind of it's it was kind of making fun of that whole concept. I think Richard Curtis was just really like leaning into how ridiculous that whole concept is. But I, I loved him. But his was the only story that didn't connect to everybody else. It was the only standalone. I think they might have. He, other people might have heard his song and stuff like that. So it was kind of throughout, like a it bit. was in the media, so everybody knew about it. Um, uh, for me, I just like the way this movie makes me feel. Like more than anything, when the music is rising and you know the heroes are trying to run to their loved one, whether it's Colin Firth through the towns of whatever that uh, country was, or you know, like it's just, or or the boy trying to run through the airport, or Hugh Grant like knocking on people's doors. Like it's just. It's uplifting and fun, and and uh, it makes me happy. So I, I do like this movie. It I makes me not, cry not like time. a not like a heartless guy like Greg. I will concede just... to your point that the editing is spectacular. That the way that they build all the stories together, the fact that all of them were shot separately, almost like their own little movie crews, and then it was edited together into, you know, it holds together. Uh, it fulfills its promise to um, lie to you about how love works. So I guess that's. I guess that's pretty good. Um, but man, there's so many problematic things in it. I'll just wait till the bad. <laughs> I really like this movie. <laughs> I don't think I've ever disagreed with you more, Greg. Um, I, I don't know what it is about this movie, but and maybe it's because it's got tons of stars in it that I really like watching before him or the Intergenic storylines or like the Hugh Grant dance thing is like hilarious. That always cracked me up. Too. Well, he's just dancing his way into a, like a class action. He is obsessed <laughs> over his work colleague, and he's just like a busy guy. And that the w only woman that happens to be there doing anything for him is the one he falls in love with. Dude, you need a therapist. Sometimes it's circumstantial, Greg. Sometimes no. if the options are limited and you're a busy guy, you don't have time. Maybe. Maybe Listen what's right what in front of you. Saying. Maybe what's right in front of you is where you can find the love, Greg. Listen to Maybe what you're it. saying. It's not love actually. It's love uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till Christmas Day when Greg's heart grows four sizes. So for me, this movie is kind of like a Christmas present. And you know what else makes a really great Christmas present? Andrew. Well, not actually Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's books. <laughs> That's right. Now arriving in stores. And this year, you can give me for Christmas. Um, I have a uh, new book, uh, the final, uh, not the final, but the third book in my Heron Old Wrong Places series is going to be coming out uh, December 15-ish. That might have the day wrong. Uh, but you can grab uh, Heron Old Places uh, 1 through 3 uh, as of the middle of December, so it'll make a great Christmas gift for somebody who likes paranormal fantasy. 
uh, in your family, and um, we look forward to the fourth book coming out next year. So, Hair in All the Wrong Places is an excellent uh, paranormal fantasy series. Uh, click the link in the description of this video uh, to get it, or go to your local bookstore and ask them to bring it in for you, or they might have it there. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the bad. What do we not like about Love Actually, Greg? Wait, wait, do you want to know what's on my bad list? Do you want to know what my bad list says? It says, there is nothing bad about this movie. And that's all I wrote. Because I enjoy it so much. So, Greg, please go ahead. So, unfettered by the clearly powerful chains of nostalgic romanticism, I can tell the dear viewer who has maybe not seen Love Actually that they should not watch this movie if they're hoping or if they live in the present day society. They will not see it all that favorably, I don't think. There are nice little nuggets of great relations. Alan Rickman's story, the only one that potentially doesn't have a happy ending, is the only one that actually rings like a real, you know. Oh, you just, that's so cold, man. Well, <laughs> that's how the world is sometimes. Oh, dude. Now, yeah, as a person who found his true love, I can say, <laughs> Uh, with some authority that it doesn't happen like that, and it's definitely not your secretary. That's oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are you saying that real life doesn't happen like movies, Greg? Is that what you're trying to tell us? That 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 movies do not reflect real life? Is, what I'm saying is, is that your revelation. If you see our last uh, review uh, about Krampus, you can see a much more realistic portrayal of uh, family dramas than is portrayed in Love Actually, which is very well written, very quippy, very uh, e well edited, very well acted, but I did not like it but there's a difference between best and favorite and so it can be your favorite movie that doesn't make it good andrew there's a lot of cheating there's just cheating and that like for something that's a love movie like the whole the whole andrew lincoln holding up the sign is something that's supposed to be like this like that people think of so fondly but it's it's his best friend's wife yeah and he's like yeah, I, that's so it, wrong. It sucks to be in love with your best friend's wife, but like, talk to your best friend, not her. <laughs> like, Ad admittedly, yeah, admittedly, that storyline is the one that I always, always had an issue with. I'm like, well, this oh, so now big. there is a problem. It's uh, it's the Back one storyline. It's one storyline out of like 15. All right, <laughs> uh, but it is the <laughs> one that always, always bugged me. I hated the fact that he was such a dick and a spineless dick of that that he just wouldn't talk to his friend about it. And that he was his only solution was to be a, a, an asshole to her, and that she also led him on and went and kissed him at the end. I was like, "You bitch! I can't believe you guys suck. You both suck and deserve each other." It's the only place taking point. I'll go back to enjoying this movie now. Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> uh, for me, though, like the characters and their motivations are kind of paper thin. There's just not like a lot to them. The movie is never boring, but it's also like not very deep. Well, it's overloaded. There's so many characters, so many storylines. I think it'd be very hard to give it any true depth with that many main characters. Um, one other storyline. So I don't like, I don't like all the infidelity stuff. So, like, it's supposed to be like a happy romantic comedy, at least to me. And you got the Andrew Lincoln stuff, and you got the Alan Rickman stuff uh, with his secretary also. Um, so, this is what I'm saying. But the one that I actually also don't like is and this might be for kind of a weird reason and i might sound like a bit of a prude but uh, the martin freeman story uh where he's like a body double for sex scenes like it's not terrible or anything but it didn't really add a lot to the movie for me and it it has like a lot of nudity in it and it makes the movie r-rated and kind of like unwatchable with like if, if that storyline wasn't in this movie, you could watch it with, like, your parents or with your teenage daughter or whatever. Like, you could or your share this movie. secretary that you're interested in. So that you, <laughs> you know, a little message cast her. I don't know. I, I disagree. I mean, I understand your reasoning, you know. Um, I don't have kids, so I can watch whatever the fuck I want in my house. And I loved that part. I thought that was a really comedic. And he's such a... I, He's the type of actor that I'm like, he like seems like such a pure soul, you know? He just always, he always plays like these like very like straightforward, like good guys. And to see him in that sort of role, I just, I uh, just, it tickled me. I thought it was a really funny little just addition. And also they, they had one of the sweet, actually sweet romances, you know? Like he like really, he really liked her. And like she was, I, I, I like that part. I don't know, Greg, do you want to shit all over that one? 
Go, go, well, go. I just want to, I'll preface, I'll preface my um, strong opinions about this movie by the fact that I'm a father of two young boys and I often see a movie now and wonder what would, if they asked me, what is this movie about? Or what is the lesson I'm supposed to take from this movie? If you think, what is the lesson a young man should take from how to woo a woman out of love actually, it's like, follow them, do things without their permission, uh, find your best friend's girl, um, don't worry about consequences, make sure you're rich and good looking and then you can just show up on people's doorsteps without any, like, there aren't good, there aren't good lessons in this. Go to a different country because you'll be cooler in a different country. Exactly. You see, you get it. You understand. You just like it because it made you feel good things at a one specific time in your life. And now you cling to that and the chains of nostalgia hold you with this terrible weight. But I'm here, Andrew. I'm here to break those chains and free you from I'm going to watch Love Actually again tonight. And I'm going to love the shit out of it. Uh, do you want a, a weird little quirky story about this movie? Uh, Chris, the one that we haven't talked about, Chris Marshall, who the guy who goes to the U.S. because he believes that he's irresistible to American women, and it turns out he's irresistible to American women. That's like probably the, one of the stupidest parts of this movie. Um, he he took no pay for the one day that he got to flirt and get undressed by the three girls. <laughs> he's like he's like he had such a great time having three girls undressing for twenty one takes that he was willing to do it for free and he took no pay for the one day nice. uh let's get into the skinny let's give our final grades for love actually I i'll go first uh for me it's a romantic comedy with an all-star cast love actually lifts your spirits uh for the most part uh with fun tales of uh you know people trying to find love so i, I give it a b plus i i like it uh as in as an out Dated time capsule for um, problematic romance, I would give it an A. Um, but um, I will only give this movie um, one of Hugh Jackman's squinty eyes out of five. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. What did I say? <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Oh, let me try that one again. I will give this movie one squinty Hugh Jackman. Uh, I, Hugh <laughs> I can't do it. Go to someone else. I'll do mine on the next thing. Please keep this in, George. Keep this yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, just show Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give this a uh, 7 out of 10 relationships revolving around Christmas. In the plethora of absolutely shite Christmas movies, of which there are numerous ones, uh, this one still stands out as one of my favorites. Uh, I give this six naked gyrating Bill Nye's out of five because I still hold this one dear, and it's the one Christmas movie I will happily watch every year without any kind of complaint. Uh, so that's going to do it for another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, tune in next week. We're doing Jingle All the Way. Uh, until next time, uh, I've been George McHale, joined by GMB Kamichuk, Andrew Buckley, and Murphy. Uh, go and check out Hair in All the Wrong Places, Andrew's excellent novel series. Uh, and until next time, peace. <laughs>